Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very, very big day for Call of Duty because today we finally got information on what is next for Warzone. The Warzone Pacific kind of update actually got revealed by Raven, by Sledgehammer, and its integration with Call of Duty Vanguard as well. So essentially what happened today is Sledgehammer and Call of Duty released a blog called The Road to Call of Duty Vanguard, and it goes over everything that is launching with Call of Duty Vanguard, but also goes into an incredible amount of detail about Warzone Pacific, what the new map is, what is new on the map, including including airplanes, everything like that. So with this, it kind of gives us an update as to what we can and when we can expect this update to be happening for Warzone. So in this video, what we are going to do is dive into all those details, break down the new Warzone Pacific game update what is going on with it and then at later on in the video we're going to dive into a little bit more detail regarding call of duty vanguard but of course the big thing here the thing that probably most of you are here for is warzone pacific so without further ado Let's just dive into it right away. So we were actually given a roadmap for what is happening here, but I'm going to break it down a little bit further because there's a lot of things missing on this roadmap. First of all, the end of Verdansk is not on this roadmap, and that is starting on November the 18th. So on November the 18th, there's going to be something called Operation Flashback, and essentially this is going to be flashing back over various moments that we've already experienced in Verdansk. There's going to be an emblem and an animated calling card to go with this event, and I'm very curious to see what it will actually be but that is not it because on november the 24th we are going to be able to uncover the intel of warzone pacific so assumably this is when the mines will open we're going to find out details about the world war ii side of things and how that will all actually fit together then on november the 30th that is when they are saying it will be the destruction of verdance the countdown to the end of verdance will begin on november the 30th and then sometime shortly after that we will get season one and with season one we get warzone Pacific. So as I mentioned, this is launching with season one of Call of Duty Vanguard, and with it, they are changing the name specifically to Call of Duty Warzone Pacific or Warzone Pacific for short. And with this, we get introduced to the brand new map called Caldera. I think I'm saying that right, but I'm not 100% sure. Now with this, we are also getting the Ricochet anti-cheat system, but of course the big thing here is a completely new map with 200 plus new points of interest, lush forests, rocky crags, white sand beaches, and as they say, mysterious ruins, which I'm very interested in. So they then go on to explain that this new Warzone game is going to be on the same engine as Call of Duty Vanguard. It's gonna be more visually appealing. It, there's gonna be cross progression, cross gen support, and cross play, just like there was in normal Warzone. And keep in mind that the Call of Duty Vanguard engines built off the Modern Warfare engine, so it won't feel different than what Warzone currently is anyway. Anyway, it's just going to look a little bit better. Now, a little bit more information. There is also now dogfights in Warzone. So they have added in airplanes to the game, which can shoot. There's going to be AA guns, which can shoot down airplanes. I'm very curious to see how this works, how well they fly and things like that. And they didn't say this specifically, but I believe at some point there's going to be some sort of dogfighting mode in Warzone where it's kind of like a battle royale, but you just fly planes. I'm not 100% sure, but based off of what they're saying, they're kind of hinting at that. On top of this, there is going to be cross progression as we talked about. So all of your operators, calling cards, and everything else from Black Ops, Cold War, and Modern Warfare are going to stay in Warzone. So you'll be able to use those as well, as well as leveling up your battle pass and everything like that through both Warzone and Call of duty vanguard so aside from this if you're a rebirth island player rebirth island is still sticking around the map is still going to be there same with the original warzone vehicles as well that way you can use all your vehicle skins and the biggest arsenal ever in call of duty there's already over 150 plus weapons and they're adding in more and more and of course with season one we'll be getting additional weapons as well additional characters so this game essentially just keeps getting bigger and bigger which at this point is pretty damn insane now for those of you who own call of duty vanguard you will be able to play warzone pacific 24 hours early before it actually releases so keep in mind if you haven't pre-ordered or bought the game if you want to play warzone one day early that is a bonus you get from owning the game other than that you just have to wait an extra day so that is everything we know if you're wondering when this is taking place it is on december the second the first is when you'll be able to play the day early and then of course all of the season one content coming out on the second so we're going to 
to get more information on that over the next month what is season one entailing and of course as that happens you guys will be kept up to date so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications on all of that jazz now let's quickly move into the call of duty vanguard content so first off we have zombies this is nothing that should surprise you the map is called durong fong and it is coming out with the launch of call of duty vanguard i'm not going to go much more into it other than that of course there is also campaign again not going to dive too much into detail on this we've already gone over the story what to expect and that'll of course be coming on november 5th as well Next up, moving into multiplayer. So as far as multiplayer goes, the first thing that we have is all of the game modes that are going to be there at launch. Keep in mind that there is the different game pacings. So as far as the modes, we have free for all, team deathmatch, kill confirmed, domination, search and destroy, hard point, and patrol. And all of those are going to have their different combat pacing. So if you want to play really fast, play pace, play blitz. If you want to play slower, play tactical. But these are the modes that are going to be there at launch. So then on the website, we have the 16 extra maps that are going to be there at launch, which is a ton of maps plus the ones that we saw in the alpha and beta so keep that in mind there is a lot a lot of maps coming out so first off we have battle of berlin we're not going to read all of this you can pause the video if you want to read all of it but as far as this goes it takes place in berlin the second one we have is called bocage and as far as this goes it is in northern france kind of some farmland that we have here my personal favorite and the one that i am looking the most forward to is a remake map from world at war it is called castle this is one of my favorite call of duty maps of all time very much so looking forward to playing this one again Next one is called Das House, obviously taking place in Germany. It's a wooden house. It looks very, very close quarters. Looking forward to playing that one as well. The next one is called Decoy. This is a training course for special forces. Again, looks really good. Kind of reminds me of Standoff. Then we go into our first wintry map. It's called Demyansk. I'm probably saying that wrong. It's on the Lovat River, and there's a church on the map. We've seen kind of maps like this before. I, the one I'm thinking of is in Black Ops 4. I can't remember the name of it. You guys can let me know what that is down in the comments after this we have dust 2 i mean uh, desert siege it looks a lot like dust 2 then we have dome another recreation map from call of duty world at war this is a very small map definitely will be one of the smallest maps in the game but not the smallest we'll dive into that in a second after this, we have Eagle's Nest. This is one that was in the beta, followed up by Gavutu, which was also in the beta, Hotel Royale, which was in the beta, and then Numa Numa. This one looks like a tank fight. I don't think there's actually going to be tanks on the map, but as you can see, lots of explosions going on there, followed up by Oasis, which appears to be a desert in Egypt. Then we once again have Red Star, a map that was in the beta, followed up by Subpens, another recreation from Call of Duty World at War, another one of my favorite maps. It was a DLC back in the day, but it's coming out with the launch of the game. And then finally, we have Tuscan. And obviously, this one takes place in Tuscany. But we are also getting one more map. This map is coming out pre-season so before season one and guess what it is shipment so if you're going for weapon challenges shipment's going to be there i'm willing to bet shipment 24 7 is going to be around as well but just know these are all of the maps coming out at launch a lot of content a lot to play and of course on top of that we also have the champions hill maps as well so I'm just going to go over a couple of other things in the blog here. First off, we have the operators. So the one that you are seeing here, the characters are in the Hellhounds in the SOTF. And as far as this goes, you have Daniel Yatsu. By the way, I'm probably going to mispronounce most of these names. You have Wade Jackson. And then finally, Halima Zambardi. I'm probably saying that wrong. The second group of soldiers that we have is the Sentinel soldiers. This includes the one from the campaign, Arthur Kingsley. Also, Trudy Muller. And finally, we also have Padmavadi Balan. We talked about this character earlier this week. You can check out that video after this if you want to check it out. Probably be linked down in the description. After this, we have the Barbarians. As far as these goes, we have Roland Zymet. We also have Lucas Riggs, who is in the campaign. And finally, Beatrice Mercier. Then the final crew of soldiers that we have are the Shadow Company. This includes Japanese Navy Defector, Shenga Nori Ota, Polina Petrova, and finally, Finally, we have Solange Hardwick. Again, probably saying that horribly wrong. The next thing that it goes over is the leveling system. So just like in Black Ops Cold War, there are 55 levels where you unlock everything. After that, there is going to be seasonal progression, very similar to how we saw it within Black Ops Cold War this year. There's also weapon progression. That's pretty straightforward. We've had that for the next couple of years. After this, we had new operator XP. So you can level up your operators and get gold tier skins for them, just like you're seeing here with Arthur Kingsley. With this, you level them up. They have their own story. Story. They have all of this stuff, things you can unlock for them. I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, clans return once again as well. 
The final thing that we have is all of the new weapons. So they don't show all of them here, but it tells us how many there are. So first off, we have seven assault rifles. So this is the Volkstorm Gewehr that you are seeing here. Second is we have six submachine guns. It's the PPSH that you are seeing. After this, four shotguns. It's the Anihorn probably saying that wrong. It's a revolving shotgun followed up by four light machine guns. It's the type 11 that they are showing here. Then we have three marksman rifles. It's the G 43 that they are showing then sniper rifles. There's only three at launch, which is pretty low. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a new one in the first season followed up by five handguns, which is the 1911 there, the Panzer Shreks and four launchers. And then finally two dedicated melee weapons, the combat shield and the knife is what you are seeing here. So the one thing that they don't go in depth with, in this blog is the kill streaks. So there's going to be over a dozen kill streaks at launch, which there weren't that many in the beta. It doesn't say the exact amount and it doesn't tell us what they are, but it's something that I'm interested in. It's something that they haven't talked too much about, but this is all of the information we have, everything in the blog post today. Of course, we went over Warzone Pacific. We went over everything for Call of Duty Vanguard. So like I said earlier, if you have any questions, write them down in the comments. I will try to answer as many as possible. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, always appreciate it. If you hit that like button, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on everything. There's going to be lots of news coming over the next few days. We're going to be covering a lot. So make sure you subscribe, have notifications on. But as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are real.